A while ago, I made a video about what modern games lack. I think that a lot of my points in that video still hold up to this day. However, very few games catch everything that adds up to make it great. And I can comfortably say, almost a year after Tears of the Kingdom's release, and competing with recent releases of other games, that this game still delivers. What's going on guys, Poet here, and today we're going to talk about a game that is more addicting than any narcotic available, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I'm not exaggerating when I say this game is one of the best I have ever played. Much like Breath of the Wild, this game pretty much plops you down into the sandbox that is Hyrule and says, figure it out pal. Sure you have some new characters that more or less guide you a little better through the game, but it's still never hand holdy and you pretty much have to find all the neat hidden features on your own and just using your noggin. The atmosphere is incredible, the visuals are beautiful, and yet again, the hardware of the Switch is tested and holds up somehow. So why the hell is Pokemon Violet still pulling less than 15 for- All of the abilities from the old game have been replaced, and honestly, as much as I miss my Rolly Bomb, I can now make a car in Zelda and run enemies over with it. It's incredible, I've seen people build planes that can shoot enemies or drop bombs on enemies, automatic fishing boats, and um... This thing, the creation that the voice actress of Zelda acknowledged to exist. Oh, and then there are the many, I don't know if you would like to call them OSHA, Violation, Korok, Torturing Machines, that spawned from this game. Yeah! I, I, I have no words. The combat in the game didn't change much, but the weapons sure did. Now you rely on the materials farmed from the enemies and just like overall materials like rocks and even like bushes and foods and stuff. And I think it goes without saying that the harder enemies drop better items to fuse to your shitty poopy weapons to make them dish out even more damage. I personally love this mechanic and I feel like it caught so much flack but in my opinion it was Nintendo pretty much bumping the difficulty up on us. A minor test of strength if you would. But beyond all of these mechanics lies the real rupee. The treasure of this game is the adventure, the story, figuring out what to do next and besting the enemy that has you stuck in place. Finding secrets or reclaiming valued treasures and weapons, becoming the best version of Link that you can, that's what The Legend of Zelda has always been at its core, an action-adventure game. And even though action-adventure games are primarily single-player experiences, the game never makes you feel that way because of the way the world reacts to you being in it. There's always something to do, always something to fight or retrieve, but that's what makes the slower times like the in-game cooking or the puzzles or dialogue between characters so much more memorable. I never used to be a Zelda fan. Hell, the only reason I bought Breath of the Wild when I was 17 and got my Switch was just to have a game besides 1-2 Switch to play. But playing Breath of the Wild exposed me to a whole world to fall in love with, and Tears of the Kingdom just filled and added so much more to that same world to enjoy, even with it being the same map. Zelda may not have one game of the year, which is justified because Baldur's Gate 3 is incredible, but it has one game of the year for me for being the one game that no matter how late it is or how far from home I may be, can make me feel that same peace I had when I was 17 years old, still in high school staying up late on my Switch on a school night, exploring the fields of Hyrule. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, like the video or sub if you'd like, it goes a long way. That's all I've got for now though. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.